Mr. Shushmans has died in the workhouse, and Darius returns from the funeral in a state of shock. What's up? Father's come home. He's in a funny state. How? Well, he's crying all over the place and he won't eat or do anything. I best come in. Now then, Father, what's amiss? Nothing. <laughs> You're very late, I think. When did you have your last meal? <laughs> Shall I make you some nice hot tea? Uh -huh. The, uh, Bessers Nixon's left a pan of water and it's steaming now. We'll have it on the boil in no time at all. Seeing Gladstone's speech, I suppose. See here, Father, it's bubbling now. And I can make it straight into the cup. Mrs. Nixon's even filled the spoon. into April yet father and it still gets chilly when the nights come round best have it good and sweet I think I put funeral in paper. Would you like something to eat? <laughs> Have some more tea, anyway. Very well, then. Edwin will help you upstairs. to see him into bed. Now then, let's have that coat off, eh? Uh, 
And the waistcoat too, I think. I'd better help you with the shoes. I say, lad. Yes? What did Gladstone say? Oh, it's much about what everybody expected. Better leave that till tomorrow. Hmm. Devilish shot all this. Morning, Edwin, dear. Oh, I felt I must come up at once. I couldn't fancy any breakfast till I'd been up, so I put on my bonnet and mantle and just came. It's no use fighting against what you feel you must do. But... Well, as Maggie told you, your father came to see me last night, just after I'd gone upstairs. In fact, I'd begun to get ready for bed. I heard the knocking. I came down, lit the lamp in the lobby. Who's there, I said. Well, there wasn't any answer, but I made sure I heard someone crying. And when I opened the door, there was your father. Oh, he said, haven't you gone to bed, Clara? No, I said, come in, do. But he wouldn't. Oh, and he looked so queer. I've never seen him look like that before. He's such a strong, self-controlled man. I knew he'd been to poor Mr. Shushin's funeral. I suppose you've been to the funeral, Darius, I said. And as soon as I said that, he burst out crying. I've tumbled down the steps and off he went. Well, I, I couldn't go after him the way I was. Oh, I didn't know what to do. If anything should happen to your father, I don't know what I should do. What time was that? Well, half past ten, or hardly. What time did he come home? Very late, wasn't he? Well, a little after twelve. Oh, you've cut yourself shaving, Edwin. I'm not a bit surprised. Oh, how upsetting it is for you. Of course, Maggie's the eldest, and we think a great deal of her. But you are the son, the only son. Oh, I don't know what I should do. There's no need to worry. The funeral got on his nerves. He certainly seemed a bit knocked about last night, and I shouldn't be surprised if he'd have stayed in bed today. But you see, he's up and about. Yes, but... Uh... But what about all that crying? Maggie told me that he Oh, was... that's nothing. I've known him cry before. Oh, have you? Oh, yes, years ago. That's nothing fresh. Oh, it's true. He's very sensitive. That's what we don't always realise, maybe, sometimes. Uh, well, <laughs> if you think he's all right... Uh... He's Clara and Albert. Oh, my dear... <laughs> What's this about father? He's had a bit of a shock. He seems pretty all right today. Because Albert's just hurt. Are you sure he's all right? Because Albert's just hurt. I was down at our works before breakfast, as usual, because it's my habit to put in an early visit, you see. I was down there this morning, as usual, as I say, when old Carter, he's our Holloway presser, told me what he'd heard. Now, he hadn't seen anything himself, mind you, so he only told me what he'd heard. And he'd heard, as Mr Clayanger had been seen down Turnhill last night, he said. He was there for Mr Shushan's funeral. Yes, I dare say, Edwin, I dare say. But what Mr Carter heard was that your father had been behaving in a very peculiar way. What sort of peculiar way? 
Well, that's what Carter wouldn't say. Now, whether he knew or not, I couldn't tell, because, as I say, he didn't see your father himself. He only heard about it, if you follow me. But he certainly gave the impression to me that whoever it was who told it to him thought your father was behaving most peculiarly. So, naturally, I told Clara about it. Well, I was going to come round later this morning, but I did think Albert should be here as well. So I gave the children their breakfast early, then when Albert came home for his, we came here. We're so very busy at the works, you see, that the only time I could afford to spare was during my half-hour breakfast break. He came round to my place last night, Clara. He hardly stayed a minute, but I could see what a state the poor man was in. And when he left, he was crying. Father oh, was? such a state the poor man was. There you are, then, Albert. Mind you, as I said to Edwin, he's of such a sensitive man. He's something we don't always remember, is that? Edwin, for one, has seen him crying before. You never have, Eddie, have you? Well, yes, sir. When was that, then? Oh, years ago. What was he crying about? Well, it was one day at the works. Well, I think in the circumstances, Eddie, it would be best if you told us what it was about. It was about the machine. That's all it was, the shop floor, you know. The day he saved the printing shop? Well, I certainly don't wonder he cried then. Oh, it was God's mercy you were there that day, Edwin. I've said it many times, and I'll say it again. Oh, you must have thought of that yourself when you heard him crying in the house last night. Was he crying when he got home as well? Well, Maggie says he was. Well, he was upset about the funeral, that's all. Oh, he really is such a sensitive man. What a good thing it is you go to work early, Albert. We might not have heard for ages else. How old is Father? Well, to be truthful, dear, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Has he turned 60 yet? Oh, I wouldn't think so. But it's not easy to tell. He's, a, he's such a vital man. Not that years necessarily come into it. Oh, no. Well, God is merciful, I do know that. But if anything happened to your father, I don't know what I should do. Oh, I don't know what. Mm, it, it's going to be quite a responsibility for you, Edwin. Oh, yes, Edwin. Certainly is. What are you thinking of doing then, Edwin? Well, what is there to do? Well, hadn't you better see a doctor? Whatever for, he's walking about, all right. Well, uh, there's a lot on at the moment down at the works. We'd better be off. Well, I can't rush, you know, Albert, not in my state. <laughs> well, Father, <laughs> we just popped in to see how you were after that dreadful business last night. Oh, you, you weren't equal to it. Where are you going, Father? To the shop. You haven't had your breakfast yet, Father. Huh? Please, Father, please don't go like that. You aren't fit. I don't think you should. Truly, Darius, I don't. Now, Dad, now, Dad. You must rest today, Father. Just for today. I know what a wonderful sense of duty you have, but for the sake of us all, you must take care of yourself. <laughs> I won't have you being foolish there now. I won't. <laughs> Father, do. Oh, my Father. dear. <laughs> Help him, Eddie. Albert, sit him oh, down. Father, oh, no, sit down, eh? Come on, let's give a hand to your dad. <laughs> You or I had better fetch the doctor. He mustn't go near business. Whether he wants to or not. On no account, whatever. Uh, but I don't think he'll be very keen on business. You don't? I suppose it's the shock. Yes. Shock may have had a little to do with it. How long must he be kept off business? I'm afraid there's not much chance of his doing any more business. Really? Are you sure? Yes, quite. I wouldn't care to give him more than two years. Really? Of course, you may care to get other advice. I shall be delighted to meet a specialist. But I tell you at once my opinion. 
Oh, if you're sure. I suppose he's in his right mind. Oh, yes, yes. He's in his right mind. Just rest he wants. Just rest and looking after. I'll send up some medicine. He'll like it. Well, I must be going. Well. You'll come again soon? Oh, yes. He might be a bit difficult to manage, you know. I don't think so. Hmm. I think your Esther makes ten pounds too high. And we'd need delivery in one week's time, not two. I see. Well, uh... I must have your decision right away, I'm afraid. Can you do it for Esther, then? Or shall I try elsewhere? It's a considerable order, you know. Yes. Right, fine. We can do it for you in a week, Mr. Illingworth, and I can take five pounds off the estimate. Done. Oh, I must be off then, Mr. Clayanger. Good day to you. Good day, Mr. Illingworth. Thank you, Mr. I decided that. How strange. Well... What's the mess with the old gentleman? Oh, he's not very well. Doctors ordered him a rest. Not in bad, is he? Oh, no. Well, uh, I hope it's nothing serious. Thank you. Good day. Good day. How does everyone know? Good morning, Mr. Ellingworth. Morning, James. Fixing supports this crack last week. Good. Look, we've got quite a sizable order from Bostock's here. I told Mr. Ellingworth we could let him have it in a week. I see. Oh, don't you worry about that. We're not too rushed just now. May I ask, sir, if Master's in bad way? I'm afraid he is. I believe in herbs myself. But is he a softening of the brain? Well, softening of the brain? Maybe I'm making too bold, Sue. Maybe it's not as bad as that, but I did hear. You needn't talk well, about that. I shall not, Sue. What's more, I shall never lift my voice in song again. James Yarley has sung his last song. I don't say, but what, like other folk, he had his faults. Far be it for me to say that you will not be a better master than your esteemed father. But for over 20 years I worked for him. Now he's gone. Although, as you well know, I have sung all my life. Never will I lift my voice in song again. I know what it is. What is it? This say ray braille softening. I'll have trouble, Mr. Edwin. The doctor says not. Yeah, I'll have trouble, if you'll excuse my saying so. It's been in my way to say cases like this before. But it's a good thing he's got, yeah. You know, it's a good thing for Miss Maggie. She isn't alone with him. It's providence, Mr. Edwin, as you're not a married man. I very nearly was married once. There you now. Well, sir. Thank you. Take your beef all up to rice. Oh, it is lovely beef. And there's nothing like meat for giving you strength. You eat well and you sleep well. Eat well and sleep well. Oh, we all need to do that. Well, are you enjoying it? Uh, oh, I know. my word, I can see you are. 
I can tell you've got your appetite back. We like our pickle in five towns. Father's always liked his pickle, haven't you, Father? Money and money is a pound of pickle that dear Mrs. Nixon's made for you. And she'll be making a good few more pounds yet. Oh, yes, she will. Albert's right enough there. Um, and do you have my recipe for pickle, Maggie? For sweet pickle? No, I'm sure you don't. Then I'll tell you what your aunt is going to do. And she'll do it now before it slips her mind. She's going to go and jot that recipe down and can ask Mrs. Nixon to give it a try. <laughs> Not that it's anything as good as hers, mine. <laughs> but she might care to try it, you know, just for a change. Edwin, I see you finished, dear. Would you show your auntie to a pencil and pad? Miss Cross. Another glass of water, Dad. <laughs> oh. Oh, That's the idea. Now, this afternoon, Edwin, it just so happened I had occasion to call in Dr. Eve. Uh, concerning an ailment of my own, you understand. So, of course, I took the opportunity of having a little talk with him about your father and this awful thing. He told me all about it. Oh, he was very frank. Well, it just so happens that after he left, dear Clara came round to pay me a call. And she thinks that we should trust the opinion of Dr. Eve. If we do call in a specialist, it'll only make your father suspect that something is wrong. Now, that's what I think, Edwin, and that's what Clara and Albert think as well. But you are the son, the only son, and you're the one who has to be in charge now. I mean, you're the one who must decide. Well, of course, if he prefers to see a specialist, I mean, if he has the slightest wish... No, if it would serve no purpose except to upset him. Oh, oh, I couldn't bear to see that. There, then. I've nearly done the recipe. Now, we better arrange about the servants, hadn't we? <gasps> There's going to be so much for everyone to do if we're going to make him really comfortable. I'd better have a word with Maggie about it. Would you go in and tell her, Edwin, dear? Would you tell her that I've written out the recipe, but I want to explain it out to her? And if she'd be good enough to stop in here for a few minutes. Um, we mustn't upset your father by letting him think we're talking about him, must we? Yes. Oh, and I know that Albert would like a word with you. So if you could find an excuse to be alone for a couple of minutes. What does he want a word about? About whether your father should be taken away. Taken away? Well, to the sea or Buxton or somewhere like that. He'd never go. Well, that's what Maggie says, and Clara agrees with her. But Albert did want to talk to you. He thought that the suggestion should be made. Of course, we all realise that the decision is up to you. After all, <laughs> you are the son. I'll get Maggie to call. Oh, thank you so much, dear. <gasps> Oh, it's going to be a dreadful time for all of us. But most of all, it's going to be dreadful for you. We must pray God to give us strength to bear up as best we can. Hey, me, me, sick. Ireland is British and always has been. Or has been for years at any rate. British it has been and British it should stay. You can't leave the Irish to govern themselves. Own Parliament, own police force. Be total disaster inside six months. Not in six months. Hey, <laughs> and what about the future of Britain and all? I mean, you start to split up the empire that way. Before you turn around, it'd all be gone. Then where'd trade be? Gone with it, of course. Gone with it, that's right. Yeah, I mean, just think a moment, Teddy, just think. I know you don't want to see this country down. I mean, I'm a conservative, I don't deny, but surely all patriotic liberals and you're patriotic, I know that. Now, surely all patriotic liberals see that if we go giving Ireland away, we should just set off on a downward path from which there'll be no turning back. I'm a liberal, my son. How's that been? Well, I agree with you, Albert. Every word. You're one of the right sort, after all, Dad. All I say is country before party. Of course. Now, haven't I been telling you for years, you're one of us? Oh, you know, these women take a deuce of a time putting their bonnets on. You won't forget to have a word with Edwin, Maggie. I'm sure he won't like it. Well, as Albert says, we know it's not him that has to worry. It's you we're thinking about. I know it's distressing for everyone, Maggie, but it's only right you should mention it. And if I was you, I should do it as soon as you can. I'll try. Ah, I'm quite sure Edwin will understand. 
Let's go in, please, shall we? Whatever Mr. Gladstone says, the British fi- Well, Doris, I really must be going home. <laughs> so must we, Dad. You know, it's near bad time for us. Good night, Father. Take care. You just take care now. And if there's Why anything... Why don't you just tell him straight out he's done you for? You just ask us. Good night, Clary. Well, good night, Doris. Now, do as the doctor advises, and do be guided by these dear children. Yes, my pet, you must be getting back to your babies. I don't know how you arrange to get away. Oh, but you're a wonderful arranger. Only don't overdo it, mind. <laughs> don't overdo it. <laughs> Good night, Dad. You know, I agree with you about Ireland 100%. You've got that matter summed up, you have. Well, it's been a good evening all round, hasn't it, Carrie? It's been most enjoyable, Father. It really has. And your Maggie's a wonderful housekeeper. <laughs> oh, would you like another of those cigarettes before I go, Dad? You seem to like them. Don't you come to the door on my account. Edwin will show us out. You stay where you are. Good night, Doris. Good night, Claire. Good night, Father. Good night, Clary. Good night, Dad. Good night, Albert. Good night, Doris. <laughs> Good night, Edwin. Please come to us if there's anything that Albert or I can do. Uh, not that, that we know he's in very good hands. Oh, yes. But if there's anything we can do in any sort of way, at any time... We shall all be guided by you, dear boy. And you must forgive your auntie for calling your boy. It's just her affectionate way. We all know that you're an important man. Good night, Edwin. Good night, auntie. <laughs> good night, Edwin. Good night, Albert. Good night, Maggie. Good night. I'll just go and see how Mrs. Nixon's getting on in the kitchen. All gone, then. Uh. Throw it away. Going to bed. You need and wait down here for me. I'm not going to. When he sounds as sane as he did then, the doctor must be wrong. Surely he must. And yet last night, and this morning. Good Lord, was it only last night that it all started? I thought you wouldn't be ready for bed just yet. I didn't know, for fear father might be wandering oh, about. What's up? I ought to have a gas stove, too. Well, why don't you? I can get it for you any time. Father's never even noticed this one, and I dare say... Well... Oh, no. I don't really want one. What's up? Do you know what Clara and Auntie are saying? No, what now? I should have thought they'd both said enough to last them for a few days, at any rate. Did Albert say anything to you? What about...? Well, both Clara and Auntie said I must tell you. Albert says he ought to make his will. They all think so.
How do they know he hasn't made it? Has he made it? How do I know? You don't suppose he ever talks to me about his affairs, do you? Not much? Well, they meant he ought to be asked. Well, let him ask him then. I shan't. Of course, what they say is, you're the... What do I care about that? That's what you were yarning for so long in your room. I can tell you they're both of them very serious about it. So is Albert, it seems. They disgust me. Here's the thing isn't one day old and they begin worrying about his will. They go slobbering them all over him downstairs and upstairs is his will they think about. You can't rush at a man and talk to him about his blooming will like that. At least I can't. It's altogether too thick. I expect some people could, but I can't. Darn it! You must have some sense of decency. Mind your skirt doesn't catch fire. I told them what you'd say. I knew what you'd say. But what they say is, it's all very well for you. You are the son. And it seems that if there isn't a will, if it's all left too late, if they think, if they think I'm the sort of person to take the slightest advantage of being the son, they must think it, that's all. Besides, they can always ask him themselves if they're so desperately anxious. Well, you have charge of everything. Have I? I should like to know what it's got to do with Auntie. Well, I've told you. I say, don't you agree with me? Yes. I think it ought to be left for a bit. Perhaps he's made it, after all. Let's hope so. I'm sure it'll save a lot of trouble if he has. Of course it ought to be left for a bit. Why, just look at him. Almost like normally was tonight. He might be on his blooming dying bed to hear the way some people talk. Let him mention it to me. I'll tell him a thing or two. I suppose he'll be all right downstairs. Right, of course he'll be all right. Don't latch the door, just pull it to. I'll listen out. <sighs> Why can't it be like the day before yesterday? Why can't it be like last night before he came home? I was comfortable, I was happy, I was... It'll never be like it again. <clears throat> Not now. I can say goodbye to my reading programme. There'll be too much else on my mind to get down to that. <sighs> wonder what the Orgreaves will say to it all. <laughs> what would Hilda Lesways have made of it? You're not asleep then, Edwin? I was just going to bed now, Father. I have not put the light out down yon. Happen you'd better put it out. All right. Funny. man about making his will. It's not only disgusting, it's laughable. They don't know the old man like I know him, and they'd never come up with a thing like that. It'd be bad enough trying to talk to him about the business. I shall have to ask him for those blooming keys. And of course, I shall have to go to the bank. any time. So are you? Just come up for a bit of breakfast. Everything's all right. It is raining, you know. 
I say, Father, I shall want the keys of the desk and all that. Keys of the desk? Well, got them in your pocket. You needn't take any of them off. I expect I know which is which. Thanks. And I say, uh, about signing and endorsing checks, they tell me at the bank that if you sign a general authority to me, it will be enough. Well, how about it? Do you think, do you think I'm going to let you sign my checks for me? You're taking too much on yourself, my lad. But, uh, You're I... taking too much on yourself! Get about your business and don't act the fool. You needn't think you're going to be God Almighty just because you got up early for once in the morning and gone down to the shop before breakfast. Now, well, then who is going to sign them? Oh, yeah. But you know what the doctor said. You know what you promised him. What did the doctor say? He said you weren't to do anything at all. And you said you wouldn't. What's I, more, you said you didn't want to. I reckon I can sign checks. So it's got to that, as it is. I can't sign my own name now. Well, I'll show some of you whether I can't. Sign me on, name. Know, it isn't simply signing them. You know, if I bring the checks for you to sign, you'll only start worrying about it, and there'll be no end to it. You're much better to... Shut start... up! Love it. With this, Matthew. No, and I'll tell you another thing. It would like your impudence to go to the bank like that without asking me first. They tell you at the bank. They tell you at the bank. Anything else they tell you at the bank? It's not his fault, is it? It's the illness, not him. It's the illness he's got that's doing it. It's not his fault. He can't see the sense of the thing. I shall just have to think of him as a child. Perhaps that's how he's always been. Perhaps all these years there's been something wrong. So every time I felt angry with him, what I should have felt was... Pity instead. The thing is, though, I mean, what do I do? Mr. Edwin, you must not cross him like that. Is my breakfast ready? Dad's private cash book. Statement of profits, 1885. 821. 821 pounds? Well, not surprised, I suppose, but... I'm in charge of all this. Five shilling pieces. I can never remember a time when he didn't put five shilling pieces aside. He's paid off the mortgage on the new house. Well, he certainly managed to keep that dark. Thought he was well to do, but there's a good few thousand here. Fancy father coping with a stock exchange. No wonder he didn't want to give it all up. I wonder he even forked out the keys.
drawn and coloured without my help by my son Edwin, age nine. Not too bad, really, for a nine-year-old. <laughs> He's kept that over 20 years. The old cock must have been... deuced proud of it once. Needn't go getting sentimental. Please, sir. Mr. Clayanger's over the road. I thought I'd better tell you. What, Father? Yes, sir. He, he's standing opposite. He, he keeps looking this way. Well, I thought you'd like to know. Thanks, Stiff. I'll go, sir. Father, where are you off to? If you want to know, I'm going to the bank to sign that authority about them checks. Oh, good. I'll go with you if you like. I can let Mike Bay as well. Mr. Clayhanger, what a pleasure to see you. And how are you feeling today? I've got so much to sign. That's right, indeed. Yes, the authority. If your doctor says you've got to rest a bit, then the very first thing you'll need to know is that business carries on as before. I'm sorry we have to be so formal about it. On the other hand, you wouldn't care to think that anyone at all could sign for you without your written permission. Hmm? Now, it, oh, uh, Mr. Edwin, I believe you have the paper, don't you? Um, yes. Thank you. Now, I've, uh, I've put a cross where you ought to sign, just there. Can you manage all right where you're sitting? I'm going this road. All right. I'll drop round with you. Billiards, eh? Drinking and billiards. And what is it? Not 12 o'clock yet. 
Well, Mr. Clayanger, you're quite a stranger. I want to take my name off of this club, you understand me? And I reckon I'm not the only one these days. Oh, now, really, Mr. Clayanger. We do sincerely hope as you'll uh, reconsider. Until Mr. Gladstone reconsiders, I'll reconsider now. If anybody asks for me, they'll find me at the Conservative Club. Good day to you. You're not thinking of leaving us, are you, sir? Well, at least it's over, I suppose. He surrendered to me, didn't he? A few years' time, I can sell up if I choose. Sell the whole thing up, get rid of it. Spend my whole time doing what I want. Read what I want, when I want. See what I want. And go wherever I like. And even meantime, there's a lot I can do. Off you go to your dinner, Steph. Uh, yes, sir. Back at half past one. Yes, sir. Uh, we say half past twelve now, That's sir. That's right. You must have a full hour. You're entitled to it. Sir. Of course he's entitled to an hour. And from now on, it's an hour he shall have. Should give him a rise in his wages and all. He should have had one a long time ago. And we shall give up delivering these newspapers. I shall train the paper boy to the shop. I shall put stiff in my place. And perhaps I shall even have another clerk. I wonder if I could get stiff to go out for orders. He'd be a better traveller than I would for sure. And by golly, we shall stock up with books. And if people don't want them, then they must leave them. But I shall have them. Oh, yes, I shall. Good evening, Mr. Clanger. Good evening, Mr. Ellingworth. I'm the equal of these men, huh? Oh, Lauren Simcox, champion female club dance for the Midlands. What's this I hear? Hey? About Albert wanting to borrow a thousand pounds. Albert wanting to borrow a thousand pounds? Ah, and they said no to you. No, what is it? Kira and your aunt have both been at me since tea. Some tale about Albert wanting to amalgamate into partnership with open cart as if he can put down a thousand pounds. <sighs> and Albert said no to you? No, he hasn't. You wouldn't do it, would you? I should not. Unless you really want to. Seemingly, they can't wait for my will to be open. Made a will, have you? Ah, oh, done calf's got it. Oh! You'll want shaving. What do you think? Oh. I think you ought to let it grow. Uh. You used to grow a full beard once, didn't you? 